Greg Kelly, one of the funnier, and I mean this just in terms of mocking him, is fun, a Newsmax host. He at least stands out as being a more charismatic form of crazy than the uh, the talking heads that cycle through uh, on a regular basis and guest host that program. And it cannot be overstated. Former New York Police Department Police Chief Ray Kelly's son. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is his gig now. And um, he decided to speak about uh, Tulsi Gabbard's exit from the Democratic Party, which no one could have seen coming after, you know, she guest hosted Tucker Carlson's show after uh, she has essentially dedicated her life to combating wokeness and uh, outside of just the right-wing positions that she held as a Democrat, including her long history of being bigoted towards LGBTQ people, her pro-torture stance, her pro-Narendra Modi stance, and on and on and on the fact that she didn't support Medicare for All um, during her time in Congress until she decided to run for president and then backed, out, backed off that as well. All of those kinds of things, her right wing positions made it clear to us that, yeah, she's going to do why I left the left soon enough and try to parlay that into some sort of media career, which is why she was doing some guest hosting on Tucker and doing the locals with Dave Rubin. She's just female Dave Rubin at this point with a bit less blinking because she just stares right at you and you really understand how she grew up in a cult just makes it a little bit clear more clear when you see how she tries to interact with people but regardless this is a long way of saying greg kelly has another idea for what tulsi gabbard could do with her new political position she could be donald trump's running mate not just a media personality but the vice president of the united states Tulsi Gabbard, she quit the Democrat Party today and did it in spectacular fashion. The former Democrat Congresswoman from Hawaii is now an independent and I believe could very well be a future running mate for Donald Trump. All right. So she quit on the first episode of her new podcast. Take a look. <laughs> All right. Now, I love our country our God-given rights of freedom, life, and liberty that are enshrined in our Constitution and Bill of Rights are what inspires me. All right, she's just warming up. You realize, though, that statement about the Constitution- Take your hand out of your pants. Bill of Rights, how this makes her persona non grata in the Democrat Party, this is radical stuff for them. Can you I pause it? it? No, she's not, she, she, that's it, okay. She left the Democratic Party. What are you talking about? I, abs I also just absolutely love it. He's like, he's like, she's just warming up, guys. Like, I know it doesn't sound that great already, but it's 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 coming. The heat is coming from Tulsi. Oh man, um, yeah, I, it, it's. She opened up that video talking about the elite cabal of warmongers. It's so interesting because I saw, you know, just a, a clip of uh, Sean Hannity on his radio program this morning saying that we should, if uh, Russia decides to. Tactic tactically use nuclear weapons or a nuclear spill in Ukraine that we should nuke all of Mother Russia, right? But it's the uh, it's the Democratic Party that is the elite cabal of warmongers. And when you say elite cabal, Tulsi, come on! I saw someone and I retweeted them because I was laughing so hard. It was a a meme of Liz Lemon. Uh, from Dirty Rocks and Jack's like, Jack, just say Jewish. This is taking too long because <laughs> that's that's exactly what Tulsi was hinting at. And when you hear cabal or globalist, you know exactly what they're referring to. But like, how embarrassingly fawning is that a star is reborn? I mean, Greg, just calm down. You can do this at home. We don't need to see your exhibition, this masturbation on air. Sorry. <laughs> Like, so much of that is what this is, right? When they get obsessive about her, they desperately wish they had an AOC of their own. Um, and that was kind of what Sarah Palin filled for them. And why they are so hateful towards Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is because it mixes their, like, sexual frustration with her politics that we hate. And she's also a strong woman. And that makes me feel so confused. And attractive. Ah! And so now they have that in Tulsi. But the thing about it is that She's not charismatic. She's weird. She's got nothing behind her eyes. She's got, she's, there's, there's. She's like bloodless. Like she's almost, yes. like she's like uncanny. It's like the uncanny valley. Like it doesn't, like nothing seems, not even just from what she's actually saying, but aesthetically there's something, there's something feels like 
disarming about her like I, I i wouldn't say yeah i don't think i think it's more of like a charisma void honestly yes they just they just project charisma onto her because they want that to happen so um man i mean they'll try to make this happen and honestly if donald if donald trump makes her his running mate i will laugh so hard i will laugh in her like maniacal cruella Deville kind of thing <laughs> sean i will the content that that will provide for no him. this would be this would be darren Ravel levels of this is bad for the country but it's tremendous content oh i i i i, I would cry tears of joy not really but um it would be hilarious it would be one of the most hilarious outcomes possible so hey it seems like she's probably just going to do a media career but if she does choose to get back into politics donald trump give her a call I hope I hope she's his first call. All right, we're going to read like 10 more IMs and then we are going to get out of here. Defcon FOMO. Hey guys, be careful. I saw Tulsi with fangs, a stone mask and not in daylight. She isn't hiding the fact that she can drink blood from with her fingers. The grifters have a new mommy now. <laughs> uh Tran Trans Tomboy, cheers to Bradley for bringing a great presence to this show and for all of his hard work catching audio problems quickly, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you on his behalf. Um, Dragonfly, farm kid here, bull on bull action is a real thing, kind of like prison rape. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say why I laughed. Uh, it's just an uncomfortable laugh. Kind of like prison rape, it's a demonstration of dominance. Well, I mean, dogs oh, no. do that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just when I heard bull on bull action, it just it, something happened in my in in my uh, gut, it made me laugh. Um, Saka Saka Robo, if Emma's boyfriend is an old head, can we get a hip hop minute every week? Well, he's not gonna come on the show, so uh, no. <laughs> uh, he's a private person. Um, do do do. But I I could try to relay it. I don't know. Um. First time baller. Hope Matt feels better and returns soon. Matt is a rare talent. Uh, literary hangover was brilliant, absorbing, and a humane podcast that made me feel like a time traveler to the Big Bang of America's rotten society. Matt's Ukraine position is a humane one. Ukraine has every right to defend itself, and the world has an obligation to help. But there's also an obligation not to inflame war. War itself is the failure. Bradley said it best when he explained how hyperpower U.S. Kneecap the UN, ICC, and its own atrophied diplomacy, leaving only war as an answer to all international conflict. Reversing that is the only solution. Yes, um, I, uh, I, I, uh, I totally agree that Matt is a brilliant voice. I feel very Absolutely. lucky to work with him. Um, truly feel that way because he makes us all, us all better with like his historical knowledge and also just being our friend. So. If if anyone and to the to that point that I we were discussing in that in that uh, conversation about you know kind of the U S inserting themselves into the founding of international organizations and then not actually uh, participating in them, um, there is this piece in the summer edition of Descent magazine by Aziz Rana uh, called Left Internationalism in the Heart of Empire, and that it's a it's a pretty and there's a bunch of you know uh, responses to it in that issue of the magazine from people like Stephen Wertheim and other people like that. It's a very good discussion and it kind of it's speaks to that like how can the how can the left establish some sort of internationalist movement while not seeming like pugilist or belligerents in doing so so definitely a good corollary to that point i was making